I think GEMS achieved a lot in the last five years. Uh, I think the platform today represents like the culmination of all of the work. And you know, I'm very pleased to see that you know, GEMS stayed true to the open source, open data. Um, they really developed new products and new science that really will inform you know, earthquake reduction around the world. So, I mean, it's, it's been brought together in a really excellent fashion. I think the challenge is to bring it to the very, um, the end user who knows nothing about earthquake. So the person who's buying a house in San Francisco, what do they need to know about earthquake? Someone, an NGO who's building a school in Kenya, uh, how do you take it very much to the user who doesn't understand uh, spectral acceleration? They just need to know if it's high hazard, then what? Then how do I get best practice to build my school? And I think that is a challenge for all of us, but it's a challenge. By making data openly available, I think also having the standards, I think the challenge of comparability between countries, the challenge of particularly in developing countries, there are a lot of tools, a lot of data sets that exist which may be variously supported, but having a global community that's setting minimum standards, highlighting best practice, and providing connection between, say, scientists in developing countries with scientists who are based in the US or Italy who can really share ideas and share practices with each other. I think probably they've had the biggest success in bringing together the scientific community. As a scientist, I know that healthy debate is very much part of the process, and I think because uh, earthquake science has been for many years a case of let a thousand flowers bloom. Many people have gone off in very different directions and trying to build scientific consensus around standards, around best practice, I think is actually a huge achievement and one that other practices can actually learn from. I think we've got many challenges in the risks that we've inherited, the cities that have already been built and to go back in time and change that risk is very expensive, is very time consuming. We have a massive opportunity in these rapidly urbanising centres of Dhaka, uh, uh, parts of Nigeria, where we can inform the risk for the future construction so that they don't make the same mistakes that other parts of the world have that then have to retrofit all that risk. So there's an opportunity today to change the future and then let urban renewal slowly reduce the risk. The challenge is to get people thinking about why this is important and targeting the message at the right time to the right person in the right way. That's the challenge.